Hello students! Today, we will discuss the second learning activity sheet which is about the feedback mechanisms in regulating processes in the menstrual cycle. The learning competency is Describe the feedback mechanisms involved in regulating processes in the menstrual cycle. We have three specific objectives. Number one, Identify the hormones and the parts involved in the menstrual cycle. Number two, explain the feedback mechanisms involved in the menstrual cycle. And number three, devise a menstrual cycle plan. But before we tackle this new topic, we first recall the past lesson, the role of hormones in reproductive system. We know that Hormones are chemical messengers that are secreted by the different endocrine glands. The hypothalamus in the brain secretes and releases gonadotrophin-releasing hormone or GnRH, triggers the anterior pituitary gland to secrete and release follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, which in turn triggers the testes to secrete androgen and testosterone and ovaries to secrete estrogen and progesterone. These hormones produced by the gonads, the testes and ovaries, influence the male and female physical traits and the production of sperm cells by the testes and maturation of egg cells in the ovaries. Let's start the lesson by answering the first activity. You will determine whether the following statements are true or false by writing fact for true statements and meet for false statements. For number one, period blood is bad blood. Number two, Girls should not do exercises and take a bath during menstrual period. Number three, periods come once in 28 days for all girls. And for number four, girls should not touch anyone while menstruating. So I'll give you five minutes to answer. Okay, so let's answer. For number one, this is false. Period blood is not bad blood. Period blood is not rejected body fluid or the body's way of flushing toxins. Remember that menstruation is a natural function of the reproductive system. Then for number two, this is false. There is no reason not to take a bath during menstruation. A nice warm bath can do a lot to relieve menstrual cramps and premenstrual tension. Regular exercise helps to decrease painful menstrual cramps. Number three, periods come once in 28 days for all girls. This is false. Menstrual period vary depending on the girl's condition. It can take different lengths of time each month. Number four, girl should not touch anyone while menstruating. This is a false statement. You can touch others or something when you are menstruating. We have learned that on average, the ovary releases only one egg every 28 days. The release of matured egg or ovum from the ovary is called ovulation. Now, what controls this ovulation period? We know in the previous lesson that hormones control many of the changes in the reproductive system. These hormones are chemicals that affect certain body organs. The monthly changes that take place in the female reproductive system are called the menstrual cycle. This cycle occurs every month from the first onset, which could happen when a female is between 10 to 13 years old. But there are cases that 
Menart happens or the first onset happen between even below 10 years old. Menstrual cycle, as we have said, lasts for about 28 days but may vary depending on the girl's condition. Two separate cycles controlled by ovarian hormones, mainly the estrogen and progesterone, and pituitary hormones, mainly by the FSH and LH. The ovarian cycle, which obviously occurs in the ovaries, and the uterine cycle, which of course happen in the uterus. There are four phases in menstrual cycle. Menstruation, the follicular phase, the ovulation period, and the luteal phase. Menstruation is the elimination of thick and lining of the uterus or the endometrium from the body through the vagina. Menstrual fluid contains blood, cells from the lining of the uterus, and mucus. The average length of the menstrual period happens between 3 days up to 1 week. The follicular phase starts on the first day of menstruation and ends with ovulation. That is from day 1 to day 14. Prompted by the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland releases follicle-stimulating hormone. This hormone stimulates the ovary to produce around 5 to 20 follicles which bid on the surface of the ovary. Its follicle houses an immature egg. Usually, only one follicle will mature into an egg while others die. This can occur around day 10 of the 28-day cycle. The growth of the follicles stimulate the uterine lining to thicken in preparation for possible pregnancy. Ovulation is the release of a matured egg from the surface of the ovary. This usually occurs mid-cycle or around 2 weeks. During the follicular phase, the developing follicle causes a rise in the level of estrogen. The hypothalamus in the brain recognizes these rising levels of estrogen and releases a chemical called gonadotrophin-releasing hormone or GnRH. The GnRH prompts the pituitary gland to produce raised levels of luteinizing hormone or LH and follicle-stimulating hormone or FSH. Within two days, ovulation is triggered by the high levels of LH. The egg is funneled into the fallopian tube toward the uterus by waves of small hair-like projections. In luteal phase, during ovulation, the egg bursts from its follicle but the ruptured follicle stays on the surface of the ovary. For the next two weeks or so, the follicle transforms into a structure called the corpus luteum. This structure starts releasing progesterone along with a small amount of estrogen. This combination of hormones maintains the thickened lining of the uterus waiting for a fertilized egg to stick or to implant. If a fertilized egg implants in the lining of the uterus, it produces the hormones that are necessary to maintain the corpus luteum. This includes the human chorionic gonadotrophin, or HCG, the hormone that is detected in a urine test for pregnancy. The corpus luteum keeps producing the raised levels of progesterone that are needed to maintain the thickened lining of the uterus. But if pregnancy does not occur, the corpus luteum withers and dies usually around day 22 in a 28-day cycle. The drop in progesterone levels causes the lining of the uterus to shed off in the form of menstruation or menstrual period. Then the cycle repeats. The monthly cycle continues for about 40 years of a woman's life. Did you know that menstrual cramps are the results of the strong contraction of the uterine wall that occur before and during menstruation? 
The cramps can be caused by excessive secretion of prostaglandins. Shedding of the endometrium of the uterus result in the inflammation in the endometrial layer of the uterus and prostaglandins are produced as a consequence of the inflammation. Please answer these questions. Which hormones causes the egg in the ovary to mature? Which hormones causes the uterine lining to thicken? What will happen if the FSH is not released? And which hormones are responsible for menstrual cramps? Now we discuss feedback mechanism in the menstrual cycle. A feedback mechanism is the process through which the level of one substance influences the level of another substance. A negative feedback affects the production of hormones in the menstrual cycle. High levels of one hormone may inhibit the production of another hormone. As you can see in the graph, estrogen levels increase during the mid-follicular phase and then drops after ovulation. This is followed by a secondary increase in estrogen level during the mid-luteal phase with a decrease at the end of the menstrual cycle. Progesterone levels are often low during the follicular stage, but after ovulation period, progesterone levels go up for about 5 days before going back down. The FSH increases during the follicular phase since this hormone is needed for the growth of the follicles and decreases at the end of the follicular phase. The FSH rises during ovulation then drops during the luteal phase. There is an increase in the luteinizing hormone during ovulation period. LH stimulates ovulation which usually occur 16 to 32 hours after the swords begin. Then, LH decreases during the luteal phase. Please consider the graph to answer the questions that follow. Follicle stimulating hormone or FSH stimulates the ovaries to release estrogen. Based from the graph, what will happen if there is high level of estrogen? Estrogen also stimulates the release of luteinizing hormone or LH from the pituitary gland, which in turn controls the production of progesterone. Based from the graph, what will happen if there is high level of progesterone? And based from the graph, explain the relationship of ovarian cycle and uterine cycle. As an evaluation, you will devise a menstrual plan using the diagram below and the calendar. Please follow the procedure in your learning activity sheets. And also, don't forget to answer the guide questions. How long does a regular menstrual cycle last? Describe what happens to an egg during the first 14 days of the cycle in Part A. Describe what happens to the egg if fertilization occurs. Explain what takes place in the uterus after fertilization. And, why is it important to study the menstrual cycle? To grade your work in the evaluation, we will use the scoring rubric found in your learning activity sheet.
So I hope you will get all of the correct answers and you will get a high score for this second learning activity. So we've done with the activity or the last. Uh, good luck again for the next or the third learning activity sheets. So goodbye.